I wanted to to see this company that um, uh, that you suggested, and uh, I didn't know Broadridge Financial. Okay. The numbers that we see here with the ticker BR are not updated. We want to have to update them live. The only price, um, the only thing that is updated is the price. So it's currently at one hundred and thirty nine dollars per share. Um, so first of all, as usual, let's let's see what these guys um, do. What um, these guys do. So Broadridge Financial yeah. Solutions, investor communication services, technology solution for the financial service industry. Um, so customers in the US, Canada, UK, they process and distribute proxy materials, regulatory reports, sales, newsletters, trade confirmation, account statements, etc. So, okay, th so this is a financial services company. Yeah, with the bulk of that... its customers in the US, Canada and the UK, actually. And uh, their market cap, if you want to, if you want to write okay. it in the, in the Excel uh, sheet, is 17 billion dollars okay they're not so and uh, they're not too large yeah so this is good and maybe let's let's see a, a bunch of, of things before we actually start so they have a return on total capital which is around i would say 20 percent so in the past was 20 yeah, I, I read 16, 18, 18, 16, 16, 24, 22, 22, 12. Um, okay. Value line is forecasting it to go to 21 again, but I guess we can put maybe 18. Okay, 20. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They have a dividend yield of 1.7%. Right now. Right now. And they have been issuing share a little bit in 2019. 2020 but for now okay. in the last uh, two years ah, okay uh, they've been uh, not touching their shares and in in the last like 10 years they they, they, they bought, bought back, back a bit yeah yeah, yeah so okay so they, they seems pretty stable with that uh, they have some debt they have four billion dollars in total debt but they also have a short term, like, a, you know, that due in five years of 2.5. So actually half of the debt is due in five years. They have $300 million in cash and uh, almost $800 million in receivables. Uh, value line attributes B++ to them. So it's not so bad. Okay. They have an operating margin of around 20%, uh, a net profit margin of around... 13%. So I, I would say not super strong numbers, but pretty stable company. Yeah, it seems so. And uh, regarding the growth in the past, if you want, I can tell you what I what sure. I what I see here. So I see that in the last five years, mm -hmm. they grew revenue, cash flow, and earnings per share at 12%, mm -hmm. 16%, mm -hmm. and 17%. In the last 10 years, actually, they mm -hmm. grew them at 9, 13, and 13. Which is what we are going to put here. Yeah. Okay. The analysts on value line mm -hmm. at least are saying mm -hmm. 7, 10, and 9. And we are going to follow them. <laughs> the um, current multiple the, for the PE is 23. And I guess in the last five years has been more around 25. Okay, trading view has slightly different numbers, but it's it says twenty nine. Uh, okay, so it it says right now twenty nine thirty seven three. So I, I let let's keep you know the consistency. I, I don't think it's too it's too different unless they. So we said that they didn't issue many shares, right? That's correct. So. 29.37.3 and so in the past okay let's see well the eps the the, the pe in the past was uh 25. Value line seems, gives yeah. you that um, okay yeah. so 25 17 2.5 so here okay so since now the multiple is a bit higher we are going to compress it okay the cash flow per share actually seems very off this is something that maybe we should look into a little bit more 
the the multiple uh, the current multiple oh, seems with respect to, to the be, past with respect to the past and with respect to the other multiples yeah you see this is 25 29 for the earnings per share but for and and revenue per share 2.53 but cash flow per share 1737 yeah so okay let's let's look uh on on the data directly on the data okay on value line data so cash flow per share let's look at let's say 2017 so in 2017 it was 4.3 dollars per share and the price was between 65 and 92 so let's say 80 and so let's say 80 divided by 4.3 it's 18.6 okay so this cash flow per share seems quite reasonable okay so let's check the current cash flow per share multiple right now so the price right now is what can you tell me 139 139 and the cash flow is 10.15 10.15 Okay, so it's 13.7. Okay, so there was something okay, so wrong it's, with the trading view. Yes, so this is 14. Okay, so at this point, let us see all of them. So the revenue, okay, seems legit, as you said. Um, earnings per share, 6.4. So let us see, it's 21. Okay, also this is off. Hmm. So maybe maybe I shouldn't mix things and uh, stay with value line. Okay. So now we have to check those in the past revenue per share. Okay, can can I tell you the numbers and, and you can calculate? Uh so if you open the calculator. Yeah. So okay. Revenue per share. So let's say 80 divided by 35. Which is around 2.3. Okay, so this was 2.3. Then let's say 80 divided by 4.3. Okay, did, did, we, we did it already, right? The yes. cash flow. Yes. Okay, but the earnings not. So 80 divided by 2.7. 80 divided by 2.7 is around 30. Okay, then let's do 110 divided by 4.2. 26. Okay, so these last two numbers were uh, referring to the average price in 20, in, in, in 2018 and the earnings per share in 2018. Mm, let's do another one, just once, one more. Um, let's do 60 divided by 2.5. 24. 24. Okay, Th these numbers were referring to 2016. So, okay. So it seems that that 20, yeah, maybe 23, 24, something like this is, is the right. Yeah, you can put 24, I mean. So I think we have uh, good numbers now. Okay, I can look up how much did they grow. They, they did grow uh, the dividend in the past 10 years. It's about 14%. Their dividend yield, historically, it's one, uh, historically means in the last five years, uh, is 1.7. Okay, and now it is 1.8. So this is very stable. They they grew their dividend for 15 years, so it's very good, good, right? Yeah, it's very good because this means that uh, this is not the first crisis that they <laughs> uh, are able to withstand. So they, they actually were able to. So they started to grow the dividend before 2008. Okay, this this. <laughs> great timing to to start a dividend uh, policy how much will they continue to grow their dividend 
well let's say nine yeah let's say probably nine uh, because otherwise it it would grow more than the earnings in the future yeah so this will lead us to a dividend uh, yield of 2.3 percent yes okay and we the return on total capital was 18 yes and now we are forecasting a return of 6.2 so we are on the safe side let's say um yes but also quite disappointing quite disappointing yeah with such a high let's say or very good return on total capital so i guess this is a pass for now this is a pass definitely i mean this is a case where it seems then of course next week we are going to um check the discounted cash flow model but this is the a typical case of very good business but uh, it seems too expensive stock plus we are saying that they will slow down yes quite a bit so if if these two things uh combine there's no hope uh, for the stock definitely to perform well yeah from 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 these levels but cool. so yes matt this is this is a pass for now